absolute banger of a video for you guys today, we embark on the 30 minute drive down to the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California and stop to get some tacos along the way. We chose the Al Pastor tacos which were unreal and they had all the salsas and sides you could wish for. While eating, we couldn't help but feel watched by all the cartel leaders on the wall, throwback to anyone who watched Narcos. Definitely a cool spot that you should check out when in the area and we finally make it over to the Hustler and run into the man himself, Johnny Vibes. Johnny made the buy-in for the 2-3 super deep, $800 max buy-in, so that's what we buy in for. What's up you guys, we're here with Yanni Vibes, here at the Hustler Casino for his meetup game. We're gonna try to get out of his table. We got here a little bit late, we had to get the tacos. What do you think about this, Johnny? This is actually my first time doing a meetup in LA in the last three years, so wow. it's exciting to get everyone together. We got a full house here. All right, Johnny, I'll catch you at the tables. Good luck, man. Yeah, see you. Real quickly, for those in the LA area, we have our own meetup game hosted with Next Gen Poker at the Hustler Casino. The video you're watching now is gonna be exactly how we're setting it up. It's a two, three game, $100 to $500 cap, so a little bit smaller than Johnny Vibes, but I figure I wanna get more people in and less people intimidated. We're gonna be there on August 21st, which is a Saturday from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. So if you're in the LA area or close by, definitely come out and check it out. You could sign up on the Poker Atlas app right now and get your names on the list. Look for WG and NG meetup game. First in a note, we look down at King Queen of Hearts from the under the gun position. I raise it up to $15 and we get three callers. So going four ways to the flop. Flop's a pretty good one for our hand. It comes six, eight, six with two hearts. We flop the king high flush draw. There's three other opponents in the hand and this board shouldn't connect too often with our under the gun pre-flop raising range. For that reason, I decided to start with a check and the actions on the button. The button doesn't want to see the turn card for free. He puts in $35 and the action folds to us. The hand like king queen of hearts here on this double heart board I think we should be going for a call most of the time, occasionally putting in the check raise and never folding. I decided to put in $35 and we're going heads up to the turn. The turn's a dud, it comes the deuce of clubs, an absolute brick on this board. If he has a pair of eights, he's gonna be ahead here again. I decide to go for a check and see what he does. Hopefully we can get a check behind and see a free river card that could improve us to a pair or a flush. Like the flop, he doesn't want to see a free card again. He puts in $75 into this $130 pot and the action's on us. The opponent is deep enough for us to make this call here. I think that if he only had 100 or 200 behind, we could just be folding here when he bets $75. But given the fact that he is deep, I put in the $75 and we're off to a river. Come on dealer, one time, really good river here. Let's start the session off right. That's exactly what the dealer puts out, the 10 of hearts, giving us the king high flush. I think if this opponent had one pair, like an eight or a jacks or something like that, if we donk out here into him, he's probably gonna be calling. But if we check it over to him, there is a chance he will check it behind and we're not gonna get the value that we desperately want with our king high flush here. So that's what I do. I donk out into him for $150. And yes, this play does look pretty strong, but I I don't really think there's anything else to do here. If we just check, he could check behind and that would be a disaster. Opponent thinks for a little while before tossing in a Michael Jordan-like chip shot here, floats it into the sky and hits the pot, indicating to the dealer that he does in fact call. When he calls that way, I'm pretty confident that we have the best hand. I turn over our king high flush and the opponent chose pocket queen, so he just got sticky there on the river and needed to see for himself what we had. Always great to start off the session with a W. Hey, we ran into Chuck from Happy Face Hold'em. If you guys haven't checked out his channel already, I'll leave a little link down below. How's it going, Chuck? Good, good, man, good. Yeah. I hear you're killing it right now. Yeah. I had a king high flush. The viewers already saw that. He gave me a little Lance Armstrong, but not <laughs> wrist ran. Good luck on the table, man. Thanks, man. You too. Yeah. Next hand, we look down at our favorite hand, pocket sevens, and we raise it up to $20 over a straddle. Get three callers, so going four ways to the flop. $80 in the pot, the flop gives us a gutter and an overpair. Comes three, four, five with two hearts, and I lead out for $25. The middle position and the big blind and the under the gun all put in the call so we're still four ways to the turn. 180 in the pot, the turn comes the ace of diamonds. A pretty good card for our range here so I think instead of slowing down like I would on most cards on the turn, I decided to keep betting here for $50. Just looking to get some fold equity from some hands that don't want to continue but also getting value because we could hit a gutter on the river or we could end up rivering a set. When I bet $50, middle position puts in the call and the big blind does as well. The under the gun gets out of the way so we're three ways to the river. 
river. 330 in the pot, the river comes to 10 of diamonds, which really doesn't change too much. The flush draw doesn't get there, any of the straight draws don't really get there, and we're still left with a pair of sevens. I don't really think we can get value from a hand that we beat anymore, and I think we're just gonna get called by hands that have us beat. For that reason, I decide to check. Middle position quickly checks, and the big blind checks behind, which gives us some hope that we have the best hand. I flip over our favorite hand, and that's why pocket sevens is our favorite hand, because they're somehow good in this $330 pot. We're two over cards by the end of the action, but that doesn't matter. Pocket sevens scoops $330. Let's go. Hey, what is this guy doing here? Look at this guy. Mr. Wolfgang, look at that. What's up, Wolfgang? Take that limit out, because that's going to f*** you up. I want to salute. Salute. Damn. Yeah, he's still going. Go, go. You got this. Wow, respect. Yeah, salute. We just ran into Key here, Suited Superman on Instagram. I'll put a little pop tag here, guys. Go check out his content. Yeah, this guy's always at the Aria more than I am. This is my favorite casino, Hustle Casino. Yeah, because you like to hustle people, huh? At these meetup games, it's very common to have these bomb pots on any dealer change. That's what we do. It's $20 per player. There's seven players going to a flop. We happen to pick up Ace King. How lucky are we? And even luckier, the flop comes Ace High, Ace 9 3 with one spade. $140 in the pot, the action checks to me. I bet $50. Everyone folds, but that's okay. We're gonna take down $120 of pure profit in this hand. Cause it's a meetup game, we decide to show the table our hand, to show them our good luck. They can't outflop us. They gave me a king. <laughs> hey, I had 10 five. Next hand I note, we look down at 10 9 of hearts and raise it up to $12. The opponent in the small blind puts in the call, so going heads up to the flop. Flop's a pretty good one for us, comes 8 8 7, giving us the open ended straight draw, and the small blind checks the action over to us. We're in middle position, and we decide to go for a C bet of $15. Opponent pretty quickly puts in the call and we're off to the turn, which gives us top pair. Comes a nine of clubs, pretty great card for us. Opponent checks it over to us again and he only has around $40 left in his stack. Come on, man, you gotta top off. That's okay, I put them all in for $40. He thinks about it for a second before mucking his card. And we're gonna take down that pot. It's Johnny Vibes meetup game here, but Brad Owen makes an appearance with his pocket jiggities for us on the button. Straddles on and there's two calls when it comes back around to us. Pretty much a dream situation and we raise it up to $35. The under the gun limper puts in the call for $35 and that brings in the cutoff as well. So going three ways in position here to a flop. 115 in the pot, the flop's pretty, pretty bad for our exact hand, but not too bad for our range. It comes ace king nine with two diamonds. We don't even have the jack of diamonds in our hand. Action checks over to us, which we expect it to do a large portion of the time. And I'm gonna go for a C bet here because this flop does in fact hit our range very hard. I bet for $45 and the under the gun puts in the call. Cutoff gets out of the way, so we're going heads up to the turn. 205 in the pot, the turn comes a queen of diamonds, probably the worst card in the deck, as it brings in the front door flush, the straights, and it puts another over card to our jacks. Undergun checks to me, and I show my cards to the TikTok live that I'm live streaming on right now. We had around a thousand people watching, pretty sick. But when the opponent checks to us, I decide to check behind, as we're not really gonna get any value from hands that we have beat. River comes the queen of clubs, which pairs the queen. Now the under the gun opponent bets out for $20. Even though we're getting an absolutely insane price here, like 10 to one, I just can't find a call with our packet jacks. You could have any sort of combination of jack 10, any ace, king, or queen has us beat, and any two diamonds is gonna have a flush and have us beat as well. We toss our cards into the muck, but not before exposing them to the opponent, hoping to see what he has, and he in fact shows us, he shows ace 10 with a 10 of diamonds, so he had us beat. Nice hand, sir, nice hand. As you can see, I wasn't lying. We had 1,200 people watching live on our TikTok. Pretty cool thing when the casino gives you permission to film and live stream at the table. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, it's Wolfgang Poker, and TikTok is Wolfgang Poker as well. Go check me out there. We've upgraded from pocket jacks to pocket aces, American Airlines, we're in the hijack. The action folds around to me and I raise it up to $12 and get called by the cutoff and the big blinds going monkey in the middle to a flop. 
$38 in the pot. The flop comes pretty good. It comes queen, nine deuce with two hearts. We have the ace of hearts in our hand. Big blind checks to me, and this is a good board to bet on, but when we're monkey in the middle, as my poker coach Alvin likes to say, I decide to start with a check and see what the cutoff does. The cutoff checks behind, which gives us a lot of information. I don't think he's going to be checking a queen behind too often in flush draws. He's probably going to bet as well when it gets checked to him. So when the jack of hearts comes on the turn, it's actually a pretty decent card for us. We now have four hearts out there. Any other heart would give us the nut flush, and the big blind checks it over to us. Having the information of the big blind checking twice and the cutoff checking behind on the flop, I go for a bet here, a delayed C bet of $25. Cutoff gets out of the way and now the big blind gets sticky and puts in five yellow chips, indicating a call going heads up in position to the river. River is an inconsequential seven of clubs. We still have an overpair to the board on a three flush board and it's kind of wet I guess with king 10 or 10 eight having us beat with a straight. $88 in the pot, the big blind checks it over to us, and I think we need to be going for a thin value bet here on the river. When we check the flop, it's likely he might pay us off when we bet the turn and the river. That's what I do. I bet small, just looking to get called by any queen or any jack. I bet $25. Opponent pretty quickly mucks his card, so we don't get the extra bit of thin value there that we were hoping for on the river, but I like my decision to bet there, even though the board was kind of wet. Went from jacks to aces, now aces down to cowboys, pocket kings here from the big blind. The under the gun raises it up to $15 and the small blind puts in the call. We're in the big blind. Cowboys here are definitely good enough for a three bet and we're going to be going out of position. So I need to size up, make it a little bit hefty, a little chunky here. Like Dak Prescott, I make a chunky bet here to $70. The under the gun razor gets out of the way, which unfortunately also causes the small blind to get out of the way, but I like my decision to size up there to $70. I show my TikTok live stream that uh, nobody called us with pocket kings, but we're going to take down $30 preflop. Next hand, the crowd favorite, happy meal, dinner for two, whatever you want to call it. We have nine six of the heart variety. Q limps to us and I raise it up to $15 from the hijack. We get three callers so going four ways to the flop. Flop with $60 comes five, deuce eight, no hearts. We do have a gutter to the seven, but the action checks over to me. I decide to go for a C bet here of $25 into 60. We get called by the button, but the other two opponents fold. So going heads up to the turn. Turn comes a six of diamonds, giving a second pair with a nine kicker. I think when we get called on the flop, opponent's going to have a few straight draws. He's also going to have eights a good portion of the time, calling with two other opponents behind him. For that reason, I decide to start with a check because I just made some showdown value with our pair of sixes. With 110 in the pot, the opponent decides to check behind, so we're going off to a turn, which comes the three of hearts, not really changing too much. I guess any four now makes a straight. I decide to check again because we have showdown value, and the button pretty quickly checks behind, so I think I'm going to be good a large portion of the time and in fact that's exactly what happens here when the opponent turns over ace five of diamonds so he picked up a lot of outs on the turn but ends up with just a pair of fives with an ace kicker and we're going to take down that 110 dollars pot with our dinner for two here that's just the way this session is going you can't beat the wolf We've waited a while, but our patience finally pays off when Johnny Vibes decides he's coming over to our table next. He says what's up to the vlog, playing with my buddy Karan. He's on our right, close to broke poker, and Johnny Vibes says what's up to both of us. We don't waste any time. This next hand is with Johnny. We're on the button. We look down at king nine of clubs. Pretty average hand, but Johnny raises under the gun for $15. Action folds back around to us, and we want to play some pots with Johnny here. It is concerning that he raised from the under the gun position, so his range is going to be pretty strong here. But nevertheless, Johnny Vibes knows that we're a decent player. At least I hope so. So when we three bet him here, when he's in under the gun, we have probably an even stronger range. Little does he know we're doing it with king at nine of clubs. Action folds back around to him and he decides to stick in the 30 extra dollars. We're going in position here against Johnny Vibes to the flop. $95 in the pot. The flop comes pretty decent for us. Jack, jack three with two clubs. He has a jack in his hand and we end up turning or rivering a flush. We could win a massive pot. Johnny decides to start with a check, which I expect him to do with his entire range once I three bet him pre-flop. And I decide to go for a one third pot size bet here for $30. Johnny thinks about it for a little while. He has a Lagunitas IPA on the table, so I think he's going to be creative in the situation, and that's exactly what he does. He doesn't believe us. He puts in the check raise to $110 and immediately takes a sip of his beer. Although we do have the king high flush draw here, we're not exactly loving the situation. We do have to put in $80 more, and he's probably going to blast off into us on the turn. 
Hopefully a club comes on the turn and takes away all the stress. I don't expect him to have pocket jacks here at all. Hopefully he has ace jack or king jack. Nothing else to do here but call. I throw in the additional $80 and we're off to the turn. Turn comes the deuce of diamonds, a pretty horrible card here and we're expecting to face another blast off here from Johnny. That's not what he does, he actually checks it over to us which I think is interesting. It appears that he's giving up on his check raise on the flop. Maybe he believes us, gives us credit for a jack. I mean what else are we really calling him with? When we have the club flush draw, it probably means that he doesn't have the club flush draw as it blocks that from his range. I'm not going to be going for a bet here and having him raise us and put us in another tough spot, so I decided to check behind and hopefully hit our miracle card on the river. Come on, dealer, one time against Johnny Vibes at his own meetup game. Let's take the home court advantage away from him. And that's what happens. He gives it to the wolf. The eight of clubs comes, and Johnny Vibes takes another sip of his IPA for knuckling over to us, indicating a check. A great card for us here, although I don't really expect him to have a jack when he checks the turn and the river. On a club board, I expect him to be betting the turn and definitely betting the river if he had a jack. But I still go for value here, but I want to make it look bluffy. If I bet small, he's a very good thinking player, and he'll definitely deduce that we have a strong hand. So I decided to go for a nearly pot-sized bet and bet three. $300. He thinks about it for a while before end up tossing his cards into the muck. So we're going to win that pot against Johnny Vibes with our flush. Because it's a meetup game, we give him the option to show one card, and he turns over the nine of clubs, which is probably the card I'd prefer him to see. It still leaves a little bit up to the imagination, although it pretty much tells him that I have a flush. Later on, he did ask us what we had, so I knew it was bugging him a little bit. Nice hand, Johnny Vibes. Nice hand. Last hand of the night, we look down at pocket sixes and raise it up to $12. We get called by one opponent in middle position for $12. We're going heads up, out of position to the flop. With $29 in the pot, the flop comes 883. We still have a pair and it's likely that our hand is good. For that reason, I decide to bet half pot here for $15. Opponent pretty quickly puts in the call. With $59 in the pot, the turn comes to eight of spades, making it that much more unlikely that the opponent has an eight in his hand. Putting him on two over cards here, so I decide to go for another bet, this time for $40, just looking to charge those over cards and get some fold equity. Opponent's not done with the hand just yet, he puts in $40, so we're going heads up to the river again. With 139 in the pot, the river comes to Jack of Clubs, which isn't the best card to see. We would have preferred to see a lower card, as this Jack of Clubs is going to give him the best hand a large portion of the time. That being said, we decide to check it over to him, as I don't expect him to call with any hands that we have beat. He turns over king three of diamonds, so he was holding on to a three on the flop. He had a pair, but our pair is higher. In poker, that means that we win the pot. The dealer with the gloves pushes the chips over, and we're going to put them into our chip stack and rack up and head to the cage. All around, a great session and a great event hosted by Johnny Vibes and the Hustler Casino. Shout out to them. Once again, if you guys are in the LA area, you want to come stop by and mix up the action like you just saw at the Hustler Casino. We have our meetup game, myself and Next Gen Poker, on the 21st of August, next Saturday from 1 to 7 p.m. I look forward to seeing you guys all there. Woo! We did it, you guys. We beat Johnny Vibes in a hand, got into the game for 800, out for 1600, pretty much no problems. It was smooth sailing the entire way. Wish Johnny would have paid us off there with our King High Flush. He later said he had King Five, I think, just a random hand he tried to bluff us with. Didn't work. Drop a like right there for us getting one through on Johnny Vibes. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. There'll be a new video in like three days. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck on the felt. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.